Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. I'm back with my wonderful guest, my baby, my boo, my baby, Whitney Gilbert. Hey, we're talking, we've talked about your book, we've talked about parents of a purpose, we've talked about our relationships class, Next Level Love, we've yes. talked about that. Uh, but we were just dealing with the subject of superhero syndrome as we was talking about your book. And that really brought up um, caretaking, which leads into the subject of loss right. and grief right. and grieving and mourning. And, um, you know, we've dealt with this. Uh, together and, and individually and it seems like uh, we've can be we've been intentional to find healthy ways to deal with grieving absolutely um, you know it's been we it's just just a little bit over a year since since my mother transitioned um, so you know we've gone through everything uh this this past year just adjusting and uh accepting and releasing and mm -hmm. and moving forward with that um you have experience as well mm -hmm. and and have lost your parents and and um, learn how to move forward without the way you were used to experiencing them in this dimension right um and so we had plenty of conversations about it before I experienced it. Mm -hmm. um, but now being on the other side of it, a lot of those conversations that you have with me, I want to have start having more of with other people because it's not something that you can be prepared for. Right. Even though you think that you're prepared Even for it. Even though you're thinking that you're, be, that you're being prepared for it, but it's great to have this insight on ways to do it in a healthy manner mm -hmm. you know i seen so many people um growing up who didn't do it in a healthy way right and and i was just determined that if i survive losing a parent losing my parent um i would do it in a healthy way and not only that i would be a witness and example for my children on how they would deal with it when when they lost or when I transitioned. Mm -hmm. I don't even like saying loss. It's the only thing you know. Is 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 we're not we're not we're not losing. It's, things are changing. There's a there's a there's a change in form, and we know how once we learn how to communicate in that new form. Mm -hmm. Nothing's there's nothing's lost, nothing's missing, missing, and nothing's broken. broken you know, um, but when dealing with grief, um, what is one of the things that you've learned that is a pivotal way of not suffering? Um, for one, allowing yourself to go through it not trying to stop it in the midst of the emotions that you are experiencing um and many of us attempt to do that and when you say stop it like what do you mean um if you are feeling as though you need to release the energy that is coming at certain moments to release it even as you go you know through this portion even for me um now because you feel like it's been so many years that the amount of emotion at times may not be warranted because it's this myth that everyone tells you that it gets better with time and you and the first initial um reaction is always supposed to be greater and as you grow and evolve that those emotions are going to diminish mm -hmm. that's not always the that's case. not always true right? and, and even in moments where you feel as though um um, even at the moments where you feel as though that reaction may not be the one that is necessary, you still have to find a way to release that energy. Right. Because it becomes stagnant within you if you do not release. I got a hat on this. It's vintage. Mm -hmm. But. You just had it. I definitely just had one. Um, mm. 
I'm dealing with being in a space where we've been taught to gauge our emotional responses and relate them to meanings. Um, how do we get out of that? How, how, how do we get out of feeling like um, I have to display emotion a certain way to validate the feelings that I've had for someone or the expectation of grieving a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, let it happen. And I know there hasn't been many times that I cried and I've cried a lot. There hasn't been many times that I cried that I wasn't conscious of the fact that I was crying and wanted to stop crying. Really? Like, yeah, I want to stop crying. So it's almost natural mm -hmm. to want to stop the experience. Right. I can see that. And what you're saying is to let it happen. I say let it happen, but I also say in the midst of that, you find the truth in what you're experiencing. And I think even the question that I asked you in those times is, what are you missing? What are you missing most in this moment that is causing this emotion to be so heightened? And if you're able to figure that portion out, then you could pull yourself back to rationalize. Is this something that warrants the same response? Mm. And, and I think even in the conversation that we've had before, one thing that I ask other individuals is, especially earlier on, you want to be in a dark space. And I think this, I asked, what are you trying to find in the darkness? Why and when you say they want to be in a dark space, like they want to. You don't want the light to come in. The light is meant to give forth life, to, to give you life as an, as an individual. The sun in itself brings forth life. But when we are feeling this experience, we're going through this experience of grief, we want this darkness. It's where we resonate with because loss, the, the color black in itself is directly associated with loss, where right. you feel that your feelings are now black, depression is black, all these things are so dark. Mm. And that's immediately what we go to, what we resonate with. We want to keep our eyes closed. We don't want to see anything. We don't want to talk about things. Everything needs to be blacked out and dark and quiet. But what are we looking for in the darkness? Mm. Who are you seeking to find? Or what are you seeking to find in that space? And if there's nothing that you're seeking to find, then bring yourself to the light. The light is always going to give you the answer that you're seeking. It's when we stay in that space. And even we've spoken about um, what it looks like for your ancestors to communicate with you. Mm -hmm many individuals aren't able to feel that or to even experience it because we're stuck in that darkness. They don't come to us in the darkness. They mm -hmm. come to us in the light. And when I was able to remove myself out of that dark space, what I was looking for, the answers that I was, you know, putting out into the universe and, and talking to my ancestors about started just falling left and right. But I was so stuck in the emotion of things, just the raw emotions that I couldn't hear anything else. Mm -hmm. There was something that was never expressed to me. There's a light over there. Um, there was something that was never expressed to me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, that I learned almost, I won't say almost immediately, but we'll say within like the first 30 days okay. of losing my mother. Um, and that was the role that my ego would play and what I felt, what I dealt with, yeah. what was presented to me. Um, like, and I realized this even sometimes with the questions that you would ask me when I would be in those funks and, or, or experiencing, I don't even want to call it a funk, um, but experiencing those, those, those natural things. And you, when you would ask me, what is it that I needed or what is it that I missed? And 
no matter how true the answer was and regardless of how um natural mm -hmm. the answer was and how justified uh the feeling was right. that question always directed me to something and once i evaluated what that something was most of the time it was my ego that was suffering mm -hmm. it's always what i wanted what i, wanted. What I needed yeah not what was I the truth of what the experience was to hear her voice mm -hmm. i wanted to see her laugh again and because i couldn't have what i wanted i'm having a temper tantrum mm. And we're calling it mourning. Mm. We're calling it the natural part of releasing one energy and accepting another. Mm. And as so unhealthy, as so unhealthy, and it's not a conversation that's ever spoke on like I, I you know I started saying no one ever told me the part that our ego plays in the way that we experience death or any loss for that matter. or any loss for that matter that's actually a chapter um in in superhero syndrome just speaking on the the process of grief and what that looks like for our ego hmm to balance that portion out and to, to understand that we're going to experience losses, they're natural. But it's the way that you react and, and hoping not to get stuck in those cycles because the cycles is what you, what you go through. You're in denial of a situation, you can lose something, it can be a loss of a relationship, loss of a job, loss of an opportunity. As a caregiver, it could be loss of the life that you were going to live until you came into that space. You know, that is the portion of you that goes through that grief that you deem to be so terrible and everything in the midst of that is literally crumbling because you're so stuck in that space and many people who go through superhero syndrome or parentification they're stuck in just that mode parentification parentification you making up words i man. am not making what up is words parentification? parentification is the is the <laughs> projection all those, we don't, i ain't never heard these words all of a sudden she get on the podcast and now she got new words up with new things. parentification we talked that? about this before don't do me when we get out in front of the cameras <laughs> what is parentification parentification is any individual who's been in a situation where they were forced into a role prematurely to act in adults as an adult okay. so your parents have literally put you in this space that now you're acting as an adult version but you're still a child yeah. so the responsibilities that may be i had a bell south phone bill in my name when i was really really young oh, okay you know what i'm saying i've so been parent parentificated <laughs> i've been i've been that i've been on that okay you know what i'm saying yeah I mean, if you talked about being in, a, in an adult role where you were this, you know, um, person responsible for other individuals in your household at, what, 13, 12? Mm. You know, being able to, to dictate what that looks like. You were the man of the house at that time. Yeah. The responsibilities on you were not responsibilities of a 12-year-old. They were responsibilities of a grown man in many aspects. Right. And that in itself pushes you in a space where you're not able to enjoy your childhood or even learn from what children should be learning at those moments. Because you're looking at things from the uh, from the broader view of uh, of a parent or a guardian right. or things like things like that. So for, forcing you to view your life from those aspects, I understand. Yeah. Okay. So getting back to what the grief looks like after you realize that that's the space that you were. And now, what do we do in this space to remove the labels that you've created, the things that, you know, don't, that don't align with you at this moment? How do we get back to who I am now? And that's where we go into looking at grief and letting those losses go. Removing the need to connect with them, connect with the, the past version of yourself, all the memories of what you went through, all the resentment that you had towards individuals in those spaces that you may have held. And let's look at the truth of it. What truly did you lose, and what did you gain from this experience? Mm. 
you know that's what i want people to look at as that's heavy this. you want people to look at when when they're dealing with grief and they're dealing with losing you want them to think about what they gain absolutely the one thing that i said and i know many people looked at me like i was crazy but i say losing my parents is probably one of the best things that happened to me why do you say that i say that because the growth that i experienced since losing them would have never happened at this moment mm. if they were still here and i remember being at a place where i needed to grow and asking the ancestors to remove anything in my path that may be hindering my growth at this moment. And after I asked that, both of my parents passed. Mm. Back to back. Mm. It wasn't something that I would think would happen, but looking at it, I know I would have still been in a caregiver state. I wouldn't have been able to move and, and do things that I needed to do. I wouldn't even be able to understand who I truly was because I would still be stuck in that space. You know, where I have to give all of my effort and all of my time to these individuals because this is my responsibility. Yeah. And it took losing them for me to realize who I needed to be for myself, even for them. And the space that I hold now, how I'm still pouring back into them without even them being present. You know, living a, a life and a legacy that is going to fuel generations to come and break those curses that I wouldn't have been able to do if I was still there. Right. So to have that acceptance of where I knew they needed me to be mm -hmm. is imperative for me to take that from that experience. That's heavy. That's heavy. That same voice that spoke to me and told me I had to take myself off of the throne mm -hmm. of my mother's savior. Um, let me know that if my mother was here, there's places I needed to go that I wouldn't go to. Mm -hmm. There's things I needed to do. I think the words were like, this season. She doesn't go into the next season mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, that's true. There's things you need to do in the next season. And, I, and this conversation that, you know, my divinity was having with me was breaking my heart. Mm -hmm. It was breaking my heart. Because one, my entire identity as her son mm -hmm. had been wrapped up in being her protector. Right. For as long as I can remember. I would had a baseball bat or a knife or something by me mm -hmm. when I'm going to sleep <laughs> next to my bed type stuff. Not because I think something about to happen to me. It's to protect my mom. Mm. Something happened, whatever. I don't know what could happen, but anything happened. When I wake up, I'm re I'm armed and ready for whatever static come your way, lady. What did you think put you in that place? What made you feel like you needed to be her protector? I think we probably went through a few moments where environments felt unsafe. Mm -hmm. Things seemed <coughs> unsure. And so that was a, a, just a protective mechanism. I, I, I knew there wasn't a male around that was protecting me. Mm -hmm. So I knew my job was to make her laugh. I knew my job at a very young age was to listen to her, let her hear her word, let her get her words off. Mm -hmm. And my job was to protect her. So that's been ingrained in me all this time. And in that, in that final season when I couldn't protect her from herself and from her own decisions, it it uh it felt like it it was going against everything that I knew to do. Everything that I wanted. The identity to do. that you Every, created. Yeah, everything that was attached to that identity. And I, and I had to let go of that identity because if not, 
that identity would have caused me to suffer. We don't suffer from the things that happen. We don't suffer from the events. We suffer from the meanings. Mm -hmm. And what that would have meant to that identity would have, you know, that would have been, it would have been tragic. And, and this is really what I were, was aware of. As I always said, you know, I don't know, I don't know how I would get through that. I used to tell my mom, like, I got to go before you because I don't, I don't want to leave. I don't want to, I don't even want to be here. You're not going to be here. Yeah. Like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to do well with that. And she would tell me how I got to go the other way. The natural way is for it to go the other way, other way around. And, you know, so being a year into her transition, you know, I've paid close attention to this process, what is provoked and what is evoked in me. Mm -hmm. And and now I'm ready to really talk about it. I'm really proud of you for doing this though. This is this is definitely I mean, watching you go through this process has been inspirational for me, you know, being on the other side of it, even though I've experienced it, um, being able to be a support to you during this process and vice versa, but to see you live it out in the way that you have and accomplished so much in the period, whether it was to not have to think about the things that were, were happening or the time period or any of those things you still took time for yourself. And even if I had to force you to take time um, for yourself in the moments where you still wanted to just keep pushing through because you think about the collective in, in those moments and what is needed for everybody else, but taking time to reflect back on what your needs were, I'm extremely proud of you. And I, I really do for opening up you know, this, this conversation for other individuals to hear because it's not something that we discuss and not something that men discuss either. You know, you guys are meant to look, be looked at as individuals who just deal with things as they come. And it's, you know, we don't sit down and open open up our hearts to this. And it's necessary. It's okay not to be okay in certain situations. What we need to be able to discuss is how we can move forward after we feel as though we're not okay. And this is what this, this conversation is starting. For other people to know that, that feeling that you're having as you're going through this process it is a feeling, but how are we going to solve what's on the other side by finding the truth in it and taking the lesson from this? Yeah. So. Definitely don't gauge. Um, I don't think I got to say that earlier when I was talking about going through it. Like, um, what I learned and, and the wisdom in, in this is like, don't gauge what you're feeling. Like, you need to be feeling more, you need to be feeling less. Mm -hmm. You need, like, you need to be expressing it more, like, you need to be expressing less. Don't, don't, gauge your your experience just allow it to happen right. allow it to happen allow it to come allow it to go um it happens in waves um you know i'm just trying to think of just ways to give it there's been so much loss happening in our in our in our society lately you know and I, I know there's a lot of people that are grieving absolutely and, and and don't know that there's even another way to grieve. Right, because the standard says that you're supposed to go through these five to six steps of grief. All right, and that is normal. That and that the sadness and the and the and the, and the deep sadness is is a part of it. Mm -hmm. And and sadness may come. Sadness, sadness is an emotion like anything. It can definitely come, but it can definitely go. Absolutely. Suffering means that there's something that you're participating in it's a choice as to well. create that suffering which means there's something that you can do different to end that suffering and create a whole you know something else so um to bring an awareness to that other decision that you have you have choices and like you have choices in anything when we talk about behavior that's still a portion of you choosing to be in that space you can choose not to be there but most people find that is something that they're doing out of loyalty to the deceased. 
-hmm. and that's and that's taught a, a taught behavior a learned behavior um a misguided behavior um so i seen that a lot i see i i, I yeah. seen that a and lot you've gone through it too and i yeah, yeah absolutely we it, we all do i went through it with my own parents to feel like i needed to save something or i needed to do this for them because it was a promise that i made mm. or just feel a certain way mm -hmm. on a certain day yes because it's the, the we know that the energy or the um the the memory of them what how they would have experienced it but not taking consideration how we needed to feel creating all these meanings absolutely for someone who but not, not but not being in the moment you know like that's really for anyone who's experiencing this or, go, or, or going through this, I want to definitely tell you, you need to move not off of the meaning mm -hmm. of, of, of certain things, but be in the moment, allow it to happen. I mean, you know, a man who who I admire it told me this before he passed away, like when he like when it comes to um, mourning or not mourning, but um, remembering me. You know, do things based off of the moment, how you feel in that moment, what is true to you in that moment. Don't just do it because of the meaning. Just don't do not do it just because of the day. Don't do it just because on this calendar day, it's my birthday or it's uh, the anniversary of the day that I pass away. Do it because it's in your heart and that's what you feel at that moment. It don't just need to be on this day. It only have to be just that shirt because that used to be my shirt, man. Go put on whatever you going to put on and know that, you know what I mean? Like he would have loved this type vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like it was don't connect with these things that you attach these meanings to and allow that to be the jurisdiction of how you celebrate me. Like do it in the moment when you feel it in the moment. Because that's me right there with you right then. Absolutely. And that and and that has I'm great uh, grateful for him. Um, definitely helped along the way. I think I um, I experienced that when I had created an altar for my parents, um, and I remember someone knocking something down on my altar. Ooh. And Where they at? I I held my breath. Like I I felt so so much emotion behind something being knocked over in the altar, yeah. and I had to check myself. And I said, "This is not them. Mm. This is not them." And I realized that even by creating the altar, not saying that I don't honor my ancestors because I do daily. But the amount of emotion that I had attached to these things, these objects, these things, yeah, yeah. all of these pictures, all of these things, the intention behind all of this, it kept me in a space of just wanting to feel that emotion. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, I said to myself, they're still here with me. I still can feel them. I can still be able to have that connection with them by meditating, by speaking to them. They're bringing me messages left and right. Do I have to have this space specifically and be so emotionally tied to these things? Mm. If I want to feel them, no, I don't. So Not how am I going to move? Yeah. And I had to, and I stepped back from just, you know, going through this whole process of it. Like I said, I'm still honoring my ancestors by the things that I do. Right. But just being so tied to things and even removing the things out of their home, I realized there was no emotional attachment to them for me. Mm. The only emotional attachment was that they were their things. But what am I going to do with those things now? None of those things that I didn't even need at that moment. I just was carrying around a bunch of shit that didn't belong to me. Just because it was theirs. Well, because of the what? meaning associated. Of their meanings. Their me <laughs> I didn't want any of the things that they had. Right, but it was theirs. But it was theirs. So right. I wanted to carry around all this furniture and all this clothing and all this shit. I don't want none of this. And I didn't want it then. So why the hell do I want it now? I want to be able to be in a healthy space 
where I can still speak to you. You're still guiding me. And that's going to happen regardless if I have those things with me. I don't have to stare at air pictures. I don't have to do any of that anymore to know that I can look in the mirror at this point and I can say, I see my mother and my father. Right, that's beautiful. And that's the best part of me waking up to say, I see y'all. I already know. I'm cool. But all these other meetings attached to all these things, it was just like, let's bring it back. Because what are you doing by? It almost felt like I was ripping a Band-Aid off each and every time mm. that I walked by that. And, and being in that space to say, I need to see this today to remind me of this individual. I'm always going to be reminded of my parents. There's nothing I can do in this world that won't allow me to align with them. Right. I was put in this position so that I could align with them. So what other reminders do I need? And that's, that's what it just keep, I kept myself moving and just being true to what I needed. And even in those moments where it still brought forth emotion and you have to fight with it, it's still what I need to be true. What is the truth? What do I need to feel? How am I really allowing this energy to flow? That's also how I started just creating art as another means to release the energy that I didn't have a direction for it to, to move in. Okay. So that those things are necessary for people who are grieving. Find other outlets. Find a support system. Someone who you can speak to who is going to also sh tell you you're stuck in this portion of your cycle. Mm. The way that you're you mentioned moving. that, that mm -hmm. there's a cycle can um can you explain that 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 you said there was like or stages and there's stages, stages of grief you stages have of grief. anger denial um uh what's the other two you um bargaining is another one where you you just want to you know what can i have done differently i'll give you this if you do this depression's another one um but just all of these cycles you go through and some people think that the process is linear. It's not. It's not something that you go by stages. You're angry today and then you're depressed tomorrow and then you're feeling okay today. Acceptance is the last stage in that process. I was about to ask what's the last one. Acceptance. acceptance. And many times you can even hit acceptance and go back to anger. Because something can transpire that makes you go back to that space. It's your job to be able to pull you back to that. Well, what does that mean that you didn't accept though? Absolutely. And even though when you think, because there be, it could be something that you accepted out of it, but you're not in total but you acceptance. Didn't accept it. Yeah, right? You're not in acceptance. It's right? it's you still being in denial of what is happening, and many of those situations you can be going through at the same time. Mm. I can definitely, I can see that. I can see how that. How and that, how that, and yeah. even for anger, being angry that you're alone, that that individual is not no longer there, or angry at yourself for not doing something differently. So many different avenues that you can take as you go through these processes, but to have an individual who's with you when you are having these emotional outbursts and when you're going through the process, when you're stuck to say, I see you and this is where we are. What can we do to get you to the other side? What do you need to do? What is the reality of what you're feeling at this moment? You know, but we're not gonna get stuck here. Mm that's not what we're here to do. You still have a purpose and whatever that purpose is, we're going to figure it out together, right. you know, or, or whatever that looks like. You may need to do this and go through this journey alone. And even in those times to say, I see this space that you're in, let me know what else I can do for you. Yeah. But I see that you may need to, and that process of just acceptance is something that you have to do as an individual. Mm. And that, that's rough for many people to go through because even with the support, you still want someone to walk you through that process, but acceptance is your choice. You have to be willing to accept where you are and what you're not willing to continue to feel. Oh, it's just, it's so amazing. I can't wait to give you a baby. They're going to have an amazing <laughs> life. Um, welcome to the Way to Existence okay. podcast. We're going to be right back more with Whitney Gilbert right here, episode 12. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte.